Hello. Uh, I think we need to have a video. <laughs> yeah, just a second. Eh? Hey, 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 finally we come to this stage, which we are wa waiting more than six months, I guess, uh, where uh, it, is a go uh, it is going to be the, f the, the finalist presentations and uh, what are the best solutions. So here again, we are experimenting a lot. This is for the first time what we are making it that way. Uh, something is that... Uh, Something what we, we we want to share and uh, ex experience is during during these uh, four days is that we saw uh, saw uh, a lot of interesting uh, s solutions solutions which were really cutting edges. Uh, we saw some uh, some PhDs also from different universities. We have participants from more than uh, 50 countries, uh, more than 300, 300 people registered. What we notice that uh, the participants are above 150 or something like that. Something else, what, what we also, also notice for this data tone is that uh, the calls uh, to fight against propaganda and to work in such exotic, uh, ex ex exotic domain is, uh, is, is what we uh, what really challenge uh, most, most of the teams. And uh, what else we have for this? Uh, we have ah, we have finally ten finalists with one of superb solutions, and I'm so happy that three of them are from from Bulgaria. We also have one which is from uh, Turkey. We have from Germany. We have uh, which is a kind of a global. They are they are from uh, UK and um, and Italy. We have from India two teams. Ah, we have from Qatar, mm -hmm. and uh, all this, all this will not happen. Uh, no? mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I, I forget about the local hosts. Uh, something which uh, we can we can share is uh, there was a lot of effort. A lot of people work on, on different cases. There are people from from uh, Qatar, from um, from India, from Saudi Arabia, and also here from from Bulgaria. Comparing to our last last data tons, uh, now we have a really uh, dispersed. Uh, we have people from different locations, and instead of having one local presence uh, with a lot of people, they were a lot uh, online and also in in this in these four locations. So here, Manipal, Manipal, uh, Manipal Pro Learn. They are they are from India. They have uh, they participated with around 60 to 70. Students, uh, they have, uh, thanks to Dr. Pao, they, they, they show good results of, uh, of what we saw of their level. It's, it's, really, in, uh, it's re really good one. Then we have uh, Hamad Ban Khalifa University, 
What we saw there is uh, two teams, two teams, and one of them is uh, is, is the finalists. Okay, uh, Preslav was close to them, so I don't know did they get from the out, uh, from the air uh, the knowledge which is around them, but we have uh, one of them to the final. Then we have uh, Riyadh AI. Uh, they, I think, they were really small team, like not more than than ten people. And then what we have is uh, here in Bulgaria. Uh, where where we have uh, three teams, three big teams. <laughs> so they were like six, six or seven people. So normally the amount of people is like uh, five or six teams. And uh, it was hosted by uh, Sofia Development Association. Here it's Sofia Innovation One. Okay. And uh, about our partners. Yeah, we uh, we have partners who really really uh, contributed to this to spread the word uh, among their uh, their audience. We have Incubate In, we have Business Analytics Institute. Uh, they are located in France. They are organizing similar um, similar events. They also have summer school. They have workshops. So they are they are really focus on and and they really see that the business needs to have understanding of the data and how data how uh, how to make data driven decisions so they really fi find that uh, we can we can have a symbiosis and work together something which we are really happy is the 365 data science this is a bulgarian company which have more than 300,000 uh, students and they are making education online and and it is for data science which is obvious and then we have Beirut AI uh, yeah, which is part of the AI Cities Network. And uh, what else we have? Probably you can you can share. Oh yeah, we can uh, we can present some of uh, actually all of our advisors. Uh, we probably have seen the, the the ones of you who have participated in our previous data tons. You've probably seen that we kind of switched terminology, but they also switched the the idea. These guys are more like. Uh, academic experts, so they are uh, uh, actually have given a lot of um, um, tips in, uh, up front before the datathon, and they are acting as jury afterwards. Not really that much active during the datathon, but anyway, uh, we have uh, two guys from MIT. This is Mitra Mukti Rami and Rami Bali. Uh, we have uh, two guys from Sofia, Pavel, uh, who is a uh, a professor, assistant professor of Technical University of Sofia, uh, Boriana Pelvis, uh, professor at Sofia University. We have also um, a, a very distinguished uh, researcher in the in the face of uh, Irina Gurevich uh, from Darmstadt uh, Technical University, and we have again a very distinctive person in the, as an advisor from uh, Pe Peter Cochran from University of Suffolk, and we have Gianmarco De Francisco from e a S a S I Foundation. All these are very uh, veteran guide, and um, they we trust their their opinion very much. You can switch to the next slide. I'm going. I'm going to continue. Uh, we would like to. We would like to. Yeah, I stuff. Grab the microphone. Actually, the microphone is not for you. It's for the live uh, live audience. So uh, um, we've got uh, another reason to thank these five people. Uh, they put a lot of work in the past almost a year, probably ten months, but almost a year. Uh, they have put a lot of work in uh, order to prepare all this case. It probably you have guessed it's not an easy one. Uh, so again, we would like to thank them as initiators, but also they were part of the jury. So again, thank you for, um, we, you're going to see them live, most of them in a couple of minutes anyway, but thank to Giovanni, La, Gio, Giovanni, Laura, Victor, Alberto, and Preslav. So let's applaud them. Yeah, let's applaud them, yeah. <laughs> they have done a lot of work and they continue doing a lot of work. Uh, for this, for this. Now it's time. You've already seen the, this slide, but anyway, we're going to repeat it. The, the finalists. We have ten teams. All of these teams will be presented in a few minutes. But uh, what I like about it, I like that on, on at least three cases, or maybe four, our uh, name uh, convention worked again. 
uh, the um, automatic matchmaker uh, naming convention worked. So we have uh, llamas, leopards, wombats, and so on. Uh, so anyway, these are these teams have shown to be a bit better than everybody else out of 40 teams, which is not an easy task uh, um, to, to achieve. Um, I didn't participate physically here, but I was very glad to hear that there were three Sofia teams. This is kind of forms my heart. Uh, anyway, uh, do, you, do you want me to say anything here? Yeah, I want to say. yeah go ahead. So uh, here now, because some of you know what, what is normally the process, now what, what, what follows is the steps. Uh, we will we will involve our uh, our initiators, the guys who really who really are, are involved in that, uh, making a small summary of uh, of each team. And each team uh, have all, all already recorded video. Something just to share that uh, the level, the volume, it's we need to play a little bit just to adjust it. Some of them are not so so loud. So please be quiet during the presentations that are. Yeah, you, you you can take a break now, and after half an, half an hour, <laughs> you can exhale. Okay, so it will be uh, because there there is one uh, one or, or or two teams uh, where it's not so high. Uh, then after that, we will uh, we will say what is the ra ranking and uh, give you more information about the words and all this stuff. Yeah, and by the way, you sh just to make it clear, this time we had like almost 24 hours of time for ranking each of the finalists so uh, they had to upload their videos they had to monitor their articles where the experts would ask them questions and receive answers the the, the each expert alone and together with the others would discuss a lot online and they would finally conclude to each one's uh, ranking and this ranking is uh, converted into a final group ranking of course expert ranking uh, so two things here the ranking is already done it's you know we stopped the voting at 401 and i don't know who is the winner yeah <laughs> never uh, so we uh, it's going to be a surprise for me as well <laughs> uh, okay, so now we are starting with uh, we will um, we will contact uh, now Alberto from Qatar. Okay, we, uh, as a backup, we have his video. Uh, Please be very quiet. It is a bit of a noisy thing. We had which which team uh, he's going to present? Pick. Uh, okay, pick uh, just to say a few words. Yep. This is a team uh, you, you you see from from Germany, but if you are ready, let's start. And uh, they are uh, they are students uh, students in Dartmouth University, and we can we, we we can start with them. So. And now I am going to introduce to you to the pick team, which stands for. Uh, Propaganda Identification Group. Uh, they are from Germany and they participated in the three tasks. Uh, in the case of the first task, they were pretty competitive. In the second one, not so much. But what is remarkable is uh, their performance in the third task. They got the best, the best value uh, in, a, in terms of a measure, 0 0.1, uh, which for such a such a difficult task is quite remarkable, as I was saying. And what I like about this model in particular is that they made a very sensitive decision. First of all, they found out which was the most similar task to, to the one they were approaching here, which happened to be named identity recognition. They went and looked for the state of the art, tried, uh, tried the model, added some features that would help in the particular case of propaganda techniques identification, and then started training. And as I told you, this was very sensitive and it was much better than the, the other model, or significantly better. And the rest of the other participants in this task. So, without further words, here is their description of the three models. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, everybody. This is Alawa Jew, and I'm going to explain to you guys the solution for our document classification task. So we tried different embeddings and different architectures. 
Our main contribution was to try glove embeddings with European dictionary embeddings, as we show here, like a concatenation of both. Um, so our approach was to train CNN, CNN plus LSTM, and an LSTM player isolated. So um, we use Keras for this implementation, and we use um, NumPy. Um, we vectorize the data with the Keras um, function tokenizer, which allows us to, to convert the text into integers. We train our model and then we save the predictions as it, as it was um, supposed to do it, as we show here. So that's basically our solution. Thanks a lot for your attention. Back from TPI to the sentence level classification test. Our approach was based on a convolutional neural network for sentence classification by Junkin. Um, we um, do first importing and then setting the variables. Um, we used word to vec embeddings and uh, trained for two epochs, batch size of 32 and a dropout of 0 0.9, and a spatial dropout of 0 0.4. First, we tried the original CNN approach, but it didn't really work well, so we made a small adaption to come up with this model. We use four filter sizes um, on a CNN, so we do four uh, convolution and max pooling operations and apply a special dropout and normal dropout. And in the end, we just do a binary. We, we um, we do use the binary cross entropy to, to learn and then optimize as the atom optimizer. So um, we load all the data here and load the embedding matrix on the server. We have enough memory and um, get the model which I just introduced and train this model. And after that, we have a validation accuracy of 0 0.2 and make the predictions on the unseen test set. For the sake of completeness, uh, I wanted to show, as we stated in the documentary, documentation that um, we also used the BERT model, which is, uh, there's code from Hugging Face um, where you can use the BERT model for a sentence classification task, but uh, due to some implementation error, we couldn't uh, get um, predictions which made a lot of sense, so we followed the CNN approach, but probably it overfit on the data and that's why we have such a low score. Our named entity recognition approach is based on Zalando Research's contextual string embedding for sequence labeling, which they declare as Flare. And their approach is to not only use um, word embeddings, but combine these with character level uh, embedding, um, as they assume that the character play a big role in the recognition of entities. For our sequence labeling approach, we first import all our input and output function as we then tokenize and create our gold labels, and our sentences are tokenized with the NLT syntax tokenizer. We also use the NLT word tokenizer. So we can see that in total we're using 10,000 data points for training, and we define our tag dictionary. Next, we initialize our word embeddings. These are 200-dimensional glove embeddings concatenated with 100-dimensional urban dictionary embeddings and 30 additional one-hot encoded features. The script that we use to combine all of these embeddings can be found in Combine Urban Dict. We've loaded the word embeddings. We define our sequence tagger and define our training model. Now we start training. Now we don't actually train this on CPU, but on our GPU server. So I will stop here. Next, we predict using our trained model, using our input parser that creates a data set. We load the best model that we've trained. In the function evaluate sequence tagger to file, we have created a parser that generates a prediction file um, in the format that is required for this data file. As we can see, our model predicts every single sentence in the 3000 test data set file and will output the data in the format that needed. Hello, this is Alberto from QCRI here in Doha, Qatar. 
I'm going to present you the approach from the team Data Thailand. What they basically did is uh, they tried to approach the three tasks uh, with a very similar approach. In the three cases, they tried to represent the documents uh, on the basis of some vectors using uh, Scalarn. They used different countings, considering words, TFIDF, just flat countings, and a more efficient version with use hashes. Uh, in the case of the first task, they managed to get a very good performance, very competitive, 84F measure, which made, uh, made them achieve the third place, which was very good. In the case of task two, it wasn't so good, but still, it, it was pretty competitive. For task three, they didn't, they didn't do so well, maybe because uh, just the counting of, of the words is not, is not good enough for that. It's, it's way more difficult. Uh, the data analysis they did was, was very interesting, very well done. They, they actually spent some time to try to understand how the data was distributed and how to solve the problem. And we're going to see now how, how they did it in their own words. Thank you. Hi guys, uh, our team Data Titans from Manipal University, Bangalore, India and uh, this datathon is about uh, new hack solutions so we have to uh, predict uh, whether the article is propaganda or not so I will, I will introduce my te uh, team members myself Heyman, Pawan and Lithin, Sairam, Manohar and our mentors Dr. Subhapa, Pal, Senthil uh, who helped out uh, to figure out this uh, datathon and and the problem statement uh, we need to find the news is propaganda or not and this uh, propaganda is uh, like uh, which can mislead us to certain false assumptions so it is significant issue which is misleading the facts and for this uh, datathon to uh, predict the output we use technologies for coding in python and we use uh, ML algorithms with the help of Scalar and uh, some data cleaning aspects like uh, Pandas and NumPy. And we used also the data cleaning operations with the help of Excel. And uh, some we performed some visualizations of what we got the results in this uh, prediction. We expressed through Tableau, which helped us for this uh, visualization. And First, uh, the data we got, uh, we got into three tasks. The first task is to predict certain article is propaganda or not. And uh, we have got one training data set which is in entirely text format. With the help of Excel, we imported the text data and converted it into structured format, which is not in structure. And we used also tab as a delimited manner. Uh, we, we got three columns, uh, news number, news text, news type, and after that we perform some ED exploratory data analysis uh, whether we uh, can we find any null values or some like that and the main uh, methodology we used uh, for this uh, datathon is like uh, we use three vectorization methods to fit the model those are uh, count vector hash vector and tfidf we can call as term frequency and inverse document frequency and with that uh, we we First got the train data, we split it into uh, train and test uh, 70 and 30 percent and afterwards we used many machine learning algorithms, classification algorithm, binary classification algorithms, uh, random forest, decision tree and those all and we actually after getting that we actually tried that neural networks to get the better accuracy and uh, uh, yeah, it uh, gives us better accuracy which uh, we use neural network multilayer perceptron to build the model so it gives the accuracy as well as the f1 score and we need to keep in mind that uh, our uh, validation will be on f1 score to predict propaganda as propaganda and see here is the coding part which we imported the data and did some uh, ed analysis and afterward uh, we dropped some null values which uh, is some eda process and uh, we used count vector and also TF-IDF vector which I mentioned uh, earlier and hash vector and I want to mention this uh, with while using this TF-IDF vector which gave us pretty good results and uh, while passing this TF-IDF vector to passive aggressive model and uh, this 
neural networks which consists of hidden layers of 30 we take it into consideration and we also perform some uh, exploratory data analysis and uh, hyperparameter tuning for this model we got some pretty good results and good f1 score also and we performed the same thing on the dev data which gave us some uh, pretty good results mm, compared uh, two percent less but it's okay and these are the models which we tried in ml you know and support vector machines and also this uh, gain and hex g boost and those all and uh, i want to uh, show you the results of uh, our our results in a visual format one second yeah these are the neural networks which we used and we got pretty good uh, f1 score 82 and and these are the results using count vector using hash vector and tfidf in tfidf we got from uh, pretty good results with the decision tree and logistic regression overall uh, neural networks and passive aggressive classifier are, are good compared with f1 score so we predicted the article is propaganda or not with these two uh, 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 models uh, neural networks passive aggressive classifier and task two is like a uh, we we must predict the sentence is propaganda or not this is the next level and first we are a bit confused to how to approach the problem statement and after some suggestions uh, to referring to the data chart which uh, some uh, friends of my uh, suggested to this approach we perform the data cleaning as well and we appended the entire data what we got after cleaning into a data frame and this uh, same the uh, the same uh, methodology is also used in uh, the task two also which we got some pretty good results in this so these are the coding part which we done earlier and as shown below and the same and we can see the three vectorizations used in the task two these are all the algorithms what we used and these are the task two results which relation we got uh, compared to task one we got some low accuracy or f1 score compared to task one in task two and hash vector tdf idf vector see uh, this uh, by using tf idf vector we used some logistic regression to predict and neural networks and passive aggressive uh, you can see that uh, these f1 scores and those all so this uh, is our methodology and approach and we also approach uh, task 3 as this uh, slogans and we uh, predicted output but uh, we got some pretty low f1 score compared to task 1 and 2 so after this uh, we submitted the article and this uh, finally i want to conclude that uh, so task 1 and 2 have been uh, easily done with ourselves with a pretty good f1 scores and task 3 we also got but it's pretty low and uh, i want to thank uh, data science society for giving this opportunity and also our mentor subapa pal and senthil sir uh, who guided us in the right way and direction and uh, in the data chart also where we got some issues and uh, issues have been clearly uh, rectified by our fellow mates and uh, Thank you all. And, uh, thank you all. Okay, so now uh, we need to switch on the uh, to Qatar, and then uh, uh, now the, the the next one who is going to present is Prislav for for his two two two, two things. Uh, yeah, you can you can try to log in on the. Uh, which uh, next team is going to be team team Lama Lama from Turkey? Uh, b b before we start for the Data Titans, uh, I really, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm surprised of of the level of the students uh, from from uh, from India. I mean, each time they're they're showing better and better results. Uh, yeah, now we have Denny. So you first play their video and then I comment on that. For how it's going. It is, it is the other way around. Can you hear me? Okay, so now Danny is leading this.
so now is the time for you to uh, comment the team's work. Uh, hi, Christoph. Can you hear us? Because you are muted now. Okay, so now I can. I don't see anything, but uh, because your video is off. Um, okay, tell me what to do. Hello. Yep. Okay, so, so uh, now sure. it's your turn to comment, Team Lama. Okay, Team Wama. Good. So yeah, um, Team Wama um, is um, overall the best ranked team. Uh, if you if you think in terms of all three tasks, um, so on the test sets they are uh, second on the first task, uh, first on the second task, and fifth on on the third task, and they have a similar ranking on the dev set as well. Um, and um, remarkably, on task two, the way the team is winning by a large margin over over the, the next team, so quite quite good job. Um, and uh, the solution is based on using BERT. BERT there has been a lot of um, uh, hype around it. It's a state-of-the-art model for natural language processing, um, which beats early advanced last year. If this is just like a few months old, beats early advancement like ELMO. Um, and um, it has been called uh, in a blog in Medium that this is the best NLP model ever. Um, and uh, indeed, I have been trying to do a number of different problems and anything I tried, I get an improvement uh, over the state of the art by a margin. And so I'm not surprised that a solution based on that, uh, you know, performs so well. Um, in uh, in BERT, basically the idea is that you start with a pre-trained uh, model um, and uh, then you have to fine tune it for the task. And sometimes this doesn't matter, sometimes it's very important. Um, and um, here the authors have fine-tuned it for the task um, and uh, um, actually they couldn't really fine-tune it uh, very well. Some of the hyperparameters they have to reuse um, parameters that they have, they know work well from early experiments uh, because fine-tuning BERT really takes a lot of time. Um, so the, the source code of the article of the, of the authors is publicly available, which is good because it's a strong system. Um, the article is somewhat short, but gives sufficient detail. Um, the thing that I would say is that, um, um, so despite the strong, strong results, I wish there was some more innovation in the approach, because at this point, it's just like you take BERT and, you know, which is kind of an existing model and you just apply it to the task. Um, so, I mean, there isn't really done you know, much more than, than fine-tuning uh, BERT for the task. Uh, but, I mean, that, that being said, I, I would like to congratulate the team because this is the team that in terms of performance, you know, is, is the strongest overall, you know, if you kind of count all three, all three tasks. Thank you, Prasav. Now let's hear the presentation of the team. Hi everybody, I am Alvaria Toglu, the uh, mentor of uh, the team uh, LAMA, which we call Language Machines. Uh, thank you. First of all, I would like to thank you Hi, all again. for uh, all this effort uh, to the organizers, to the sponsors, to the researchers who prepared the data set, to the participants who made it uh, really uh, competitive, and uh, to the funders who really donated their money for to make this competition somewhat more interesting and showing uh, support to uh, to us to feel that it is really worth addressing this issue so uh, we are a t uh, team of researchers in Cochin University Istanbul working on a protest uh, event collection from news articles uh, and we are we know how hard it can be to share to organize such a shared task from our experience we are organizing a protest news in play as well uh, we were uh, three people uh, one at, and we were all uh, online at our houses 
one in Tokyo, one in uh, and two in Istanbul. Uh, the time difference uh, with all these participants and us was uh, hard, but the organizers organizers really uh, managed it well. So uh, our team consists of me, Ali Riyatolo, Osman Mutlu, a master student here at Koch University, and the Arda Akdemir from uh, Tokyo, uh, who was a trainee with us and now a pre PhD uh, in a pre PhD period uh, in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, we spent one and a half day to prepare our submissions from Saturday morning until the submission time uh, and got the results that were sub reported in our on the leaderboard and uh, in our article. Please refer to them. Uh, I would like to provide you some specifics of uh, our participation. Uh, I, I, I would like to go over the article. We set up a GitHub repository and uh, separated our solid code for each uh, task. Uh, the data was imbalanced. Uh, for instance, for the document level uh, classification, there were around 4,000 articles positively labeled and 31,000 negatively labeled. Uh, the rest of the tasks had similar imbalances in, in terms of label distribution, document length, uh, kind of things. Uh, one uh, remarkable thing, we observed nine, around 900 empty uh, instances in the task 2. We ignored those in our pre-processing -pre and data preparation step. Uh, that is uh, for the data preparation uh, for task uh, 3, we used a stop word list. Uh, no other pre-processing was uh, really applied. Uh, for task 1 and task 2, we optimized the uh, BART model, which is bidirectional encoder representations from transformer. Uh, the pre-trained mo models were optimized and customized by us uh, for our tasks. Uh, we used 10% held out data uh, from the training data. Uh, we had some experience in optimizing this model, uh, but it took quite a lot of time until we get some results. Therefore, we couldn't generate many uh, submissions, but still uh, it, it was, uh, it, it looked like it is a sub at a sufficient quality. Uh, for task three, uh, are the uh, by the way, task one and task two were prepared by Osman Mutlu, and for the task three was prepared by uh, Arda Akdemir. Uh, he was affected by the uh, time difference. He was in Tokyo and could spend hardly a couple of hours. But anyway, we have a submission for it. Uh, we have uh, typical words. Uh, our approach is a frequency-based, uh, optimized, uh, based on the frequency per each uh, label. Uh, we ranked uh, second for the task one, first in task two, and fifth for task three. Uh, we think uh, more given more time, there is some room for improvement, but in any case, for we think it is fine. Thank you very much, and hope this uh, task really gets traction and be solved soon. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next team will be Team Antiganda. <laughs> Obviously, the Bulgarian guys. Okay, so now, um, time. we have Team Antiganda, who are finalists from Bulgaria, Veselin Stefan, Buyan, and Kuzman. And Prasav Nakov will share his comment on their solution. So, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about Antiganda. Antiganda comes from anti-propaganda, right? Um, so what is interesting here is the third uh, task, um, where the team is ranked third, which is a good a good performance. Um, and uh, so what they do is uh, they use um, 
a bio encoding, which is they approach the task as a sequence uh, tagging, where they uh, at the individual work level, where um, they mark the beginning of each segment uh, for task three, each segment that contains propaganda with the B tag, B means uh, begin, um, uh, for the very first token and for every subsequent token in the um, uh, current uh, span of, of uh, use of a particular propaganda technique, they use the I tag, which means inside, and then for anything else that is not really part of a propaganda technique, they have the O, which is the outside tag. This is a standard way to approach a related task of name entity recognition. Um, and then actually those are more complex tasks. So for example, we have begin and the name of a propaganda technique. So we have like uh, 18 possible begin tags for each of the eight techniques, 18 possible I tags for each of the uh, 18 techniques. That makes 36 and then one for the outside tag. This means makes a total of 37 tags that they work with. Um, so, they um, have a multi-layer bi-directional uh, LSTM um, and um, after that they, 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 make, they make a prediction. So they approach the task um, as some, you, you can think of this as kind of multi-task training because it's trying to model all labels for all the 18 techniques together, but then they have like a separate decoder for each task. Um, so I can say that this is an approach that makes a lot of sense. Um, this is the approach that I would have chosen to address the task because this is the standard way, way to do it with this particular bioencoding. The nice thing is that they are giving the code to convert the data set into this bioformat, which is something that would be useful for other researchers in, in the future. Um, they have the code. The code is integrating the article in a Jupyter style uh, notebook, which is also good. Um, and uh, they have a nice discussion about their model, the deep learning model and the loss that is being used even have very nice directions for future work. Um, the, the only thing is that, uh, you know, they are third uh, in the ranking, uh, which is uh, still a very good res result. And I would like to congratulate them for that because uh, at the beginning when we had just the, the leaderboard for the development set, nobody was getting such results. Everybody was getting much worse. So I was even like scared uh, for a moment. Um, yet they are behind the winner by, by a large margin. Um, um, and, uh, but anyway, the, the source code is available publicly on a GitHub. We have also this conversion. Um, what I would say is that there are other models that might have made, you know, uh, um, extensions of the model that they're using. So for example, instead of just LSTM, they might could have had LSTM CRF or CNN CRF. Or even BERT. BERT actually has a nice model for sequence modeling. Thank you. Thank you as well. Uh, by the way, yeah, we had uh, awesome leaderboard. So congrats uh, awesome to the team who reached 30 this leaderboard. Uh, but yeah, of course, these are not the final results. So there is a drama still ongoing here. And thank you, Prasara, for. for their solution and Giovanni you are in Dubai do you want to say something Chakeba. or sing a song probably later okay so let me, yeah. let me, say, let me say something in the meantime that you know here um, I'm here actually with one of the team members from from Qatar there are like two teams here you know participating uh, but kind of you know most of the people in the very last minute, you know, canceled their coming because uh, it's a celebration atmosphere in Qatar because Qatar has just won yeah, uh, yeah. against Saudi, uh, sorry, against uh, the United Arab Emirates in football four to zero on the semi final of the Asian Cup. So, and just crazy in Doha everywhere, you know, you cannot really drive anywhere and so on. So, okay. Congrats. And now let's hear the team's presentation. Hi, we are Antiganda, and this is the task one where we try to classify articles on, into types, uh, non propaganda and propaganda. We can see from the data set that it's highly skewed to the 
non-propaganda type, uh, 88% uh, of uh, all directors are non-propaganda. Uh, We've tried uh, three models, excuse me. Uh, the first one is uh, the naive uh, base uh, classifier, but it uh, tends to classify only uh, one class, which is uh, non-propaganda, uh, so it's not a good uh, classifier. Um, but still uh, has a high accuracy and high F1 uh, score uh, for the non-propaganda type because uh, it is uh, highly uh, the data is uh, highly skewed. Uh, you can see it uh, here. But uh, the propaganda type is very poor. Uh, the next classifier is the support vector classifier. It uh, gives us um, the two uh, classes. And uh, here we have a much better result. We get an average of 96 uh, F1 score, but it still performs better on the non-propaganda type. And uh, the last uh, model uh, is a recurrent neural network uh, with eight uh, layers. Um, you can see uh, the summary of the model here. We also have LSTM, a fully connected test, uh, and drop out and 5,400 and five, ne, more than a half a million parameters. The neural network performs with an accuracy of uh, um, 93%, which is uh, worse than the support vector classifier. So we've used the support vector classifier to generate uh, and upload uh, the file for the uh, live uh, board. So thank you, and if you have any questions, you can give it to me. Hello, I'm Martin, and I'm going to present you our solution to task three, uh, finding manipulation in the text for the Hack the News data. Uh, our solution is based on a deep learning model, which is uh, quite standard. Basically, we have uh, two bidirectional LSTM layers, uh, which takes us input on um, a word embedding. And uh, what's interesting is that uh, we do a multitask training, uh, which means that we train on all of the annotation types at once. However, we do have a decoupled decoder for each of the annotation types. In this case, an annotation type is a uh, manipulation type. Okay but all of them share a common encoder. Um, so the way we achieve that is that uh, we use uh, bio embeddings, uh, well, bio uh, annotations, uh, which means that for every word, we must annotate whether it's the beginning of an annotation, it's the inside an annotation, or it's outside of an annotation, which means that it's not an annotation. And you know, this is a really common approach in doing named entity recognition. Uh, so a natural extension is to um, define uh, bio annotations for each of the um, manipulation types uh, that we have in a data set. So in this case, uh, we have 18 annotations. And so for each word, we must predict if it's uh, part of a name calling, if it's part of an obfuscation, a loaded language, a doubt, or any of the other types time. Anyways, let's go over the encoder uh, and the whole model architecture. Uh, so, you know, this is the standard uh, bidirectional LSTM with uh, embeddings. So we run the whole text through uh, these layers. And uh, basically we get a vector representation for every position in the text. Okay, so this is uh, this uh, final uh, vector that we get for every time step. Afterwards, uh, we run uh, this vector through 18 different decoders uh, to get uh, the prediction. So the prediction is uh, three uh, by one vector, uh, whether, which uh, gives the probability that the word is uh, uh, inside an annotation or not. Okay, and we have one linear decoder for every annotation type. Uh, so um, we didn't perform very well, but I really do see some uh, potential in uh, extending these models uh, for uh, these uh, short-term tasks 
which are doubt, name calling, and loaded language. Uh, whereas for the other ones, uh, which are kind of more semantic or they're on a more global document level, uh, maybe something else uh, needs to be done. Uh, thank you everybody for your attention and uh, for the amazing day. So see you next time. Good luck. You have a problem system. Okay, okay. It seems like we have some issues. Uh, not with us here. It's uh, somewhere online. Uh, but we should go on. We should switch to the next team uh, to the presentation. Uh, actually, the next team would be which one? Team Leopards. Uh, Victor should present them. Is Victor online? Okay. Victor, can you hear us? Uh, Victor? Okay. If uh, Victor... For some reason, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a, a go for 30 more seconds or a minute. If Victor doesn't... Okay, there you go. Okay, Victor. Okay, Victor. Victor is now here with us and he will come with us and he from Sweden, right? Yes, hello from Stockholm, from the Museum for Natural History. Um, I'm going to present to you Team uh, Leopards, correct? All right, all right. So, so Team um, Leopards is a, uh, a two-person team. Uh, it's an animal a uh, named uh, team consisting of two people, Victor and uh, Mario. Um, they focus on task two, where they placed number six with an uh, F1 score of 0.5 to 74. Uh, uh, they wrote a nice article where they, uh, they explained their uh, procedure. And uh, they followed the usual methodology. They began with uh, data exploration, which uh, showed that the data set is indeed um, unbalanced. Uh, they did a fun baseline uh, where the predictor was simply everything is propaganda. And that gave them an F1 score of about 49.8. They also correctly noticed that the labels uh, in task three correspond to uh, task two, which is uh, correct. This, this is how the labels for, for task two were derived. Uh, the, their exploratory analysis also showed that there is little overlap uh, between features um, for the different, um, um, essentially for, for task three, uh, the, 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 the labels are, are unique and um, they, they need to use different features to uh, predict them. So after their exploratory analysis, they decided to go for uh, an ensemble uh, method and to um, add as many semantic uh, features as possible. They also uh, were of the opinion that sentiment analysis uh, might help with the task. So they ended up um, using the following features, word to vec, engrams, um, uh, sentiment, uh, and a, a lot of semantic features such as um, intensifying words, glittering words, su superlatives, and, and so forth. Um, they, they did the standard data preparation, data cleaning, software, software, remodel, etc. Then they had an interesting approach in the modeling step where um, they were going to make two steps. Um, essentially, first, um, they were going to try to feature uh, extractors and uh, add a simple classification method such as a naive, days, uh, 10 years, neighbors, or logistic regression on top of it. 
And after uh, gaining information um, about uh, the way to extract the, uh, the features, um, they are going to combine the best, um, in, in the second step, the best feature, feature extractors um, with additional sentiment features and then optimize the hyperparameters and um, evaluate the, an ensemble approach. So they, they conclude their article with um, uh, a, a little bit of self-evaluation. So they, they, they present their findings um, in, in steps uh, one and two, for example, something like work to back out performs uh, unigrams and logistic uh, regression is the best uh, top classification in, in, in their case. Um, however, I'm, I'm missing a sentence saying what was the final model that was submitted? In, in a sense, I would have loved to see a conclusion um, in, in, in their article. Uh, nevertheless, the article is very um, well written. As I said, a little too short in my opinion. Um, also, they, um, the, the title could have been a little more creative. Um, the jury uh, uh, evaluated uh, uh, the performance of the team and, and the article very well received. Um, and especially uh, the jury liked the description of the uh, feature engineering process. And um, with that, I want to conclude my in introduction and um, give it back to Denita. Thank you, Vicky, for this comment. And now let's hear the team, Leopard. Uh, welcome to the Teams Leopard presentation. Um, my name is Victor. I'm going to speak about the work we did with my uh, teammate Mario on uh, the Datathon tasks one and two. Uh, first, I'll speak about task one. Um, our overall approach was uh, quite traditional. First, we did some data exploration, and then we performed the usual pre-processing steps. We cleaned the text. We lemmatize the data, uh, we removed some stop words, and then we worked with different ways to represent a document. So we tried unigrams, bigrams, trigrams, and different combinations of those. Um, we also tried to experiment with different learning methods, uh, for example, k-nearest neighbors, logistic regression, different ensemble learners, and basically we optimized uh, different hyperparameters of these methods on the training data, and once we found it, we uh, used the best model to prepare our test submission. What are the key findings from this work? So uh, what we find is that logistic regression proves to be the best learning method. It outperformed all the other ones. Um, and quite an interesting finding here is that we notice that tree grams performed the best. So the, these were the most useful features. And in fact, if we represent the documents purely from tree grams, such a representation proved to be um, uh, more useful for us than unigrams or bigrams added to, 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 to tree grams. Talking about the second task, uh, overall approach was as follows. So we first also tried to decide on the way to represent sentences. We looked at back of word representations and we looked at word embeddings. Um, when we used word embeddings, basically what we did, we took all the words in a sentence, other than stop words, we looked up their vectors from a pre-trained word to vec model. We used the 20 dimensional vectors that we obtained from the GLAV website and we uh, concatenated all the vectors that, uh, all the vectors of words that constituted the sentence. Uh, after that, we wanted to add some new features, so we looked at different ways to capture the specifics of this use case. For example, um, our initial data exploration suggested that sentiment is an important um, aspect of propaganda-related statements. O also. Um, generalizing statements, uh, statements that have some general character that are also quite 
frequent in propaganda related texts. So we tried to come up with features that would capture these phenomena. Now, after adding the extra features, then we actually started to experiment with different learners. Again, we tried to optimize the, mod the models on the training set. We experimented with different hyperparameters. We used cross-validation to do that. And once we found the best parameter settings, then we used it to um, ap apply it to the test data and uh, make a submission based on that. So here is a list of eventual features that we use. So we use word to vec uh, representations. And in addition, we use the following features. Sentiment. So sentiment was uh, basically the proportion of uh, sentiment bearing words that were found in a sentence. Similarly, we had the feature for intensifying words. So this was the proportion of uh, intensifying adverbs in a the sentence. Then we had a special feature called glittering words. Glittering words, basically, it's a term um, that we found in one reference resource on uh, propaganda techniques. Um, glittering words are meant to be words that uh, are abstract in, in nature, but yet they evoke some uh, strong feelings in people as a rule. So examples would be patriotism, justice, truth, democracy, and so on and so forth. So we semi-automatically compile such a list using um, a word to vec model. So what are our key findings from this work? Uh, we found that word to vec representations worked better than n-grams, which was somewhat predictable. Uh, we found that logistic regression, again, was the best uh, classification methods. And we also find that our artificially engineered features, such as sentiment and glittering words, are quite important. So if we rank features by importance, uh, they tend to be at the top, among top five features um, that are useful for classification. What didn't help, uh, again, somewhat unexpectedly, was that feature selection failed to improve on the on the full feature set. We tried to select the most useful features using uh, chi-square score. So we looked at how each feature correlates with uh, the our target label on the training data. And based on that, we tried to select the best features. And unfortunately, we weren't able to achieve any improvement on the full feature set. And another outcome is that um, ensemble tree methods uh, did not perform just as we expected. Um, and probably we just had to spend a bit more time on fine tuning them, but so far we failed to improve on that. From us, thank you very much. Okay, I would like to say that we probably have some technical issues with the streaming, uh, but, and we were actually considering even to make a short break, but it seems like they are settled. Uh, so I think, I'm, I don't know what Victor knows right now. Do we continue with the next presentation or not? Uh, okay, so I think we go on. Yes, we continue with the, with, uh, the next presentation right now. Yes. Hello. Great. So we have one more presentation by Dayton Animals, and this would be the team Asel Lombard from Bulgaria. Could you share with us your comments on their article? Yes. Um, indeed, another another uh, animal-based um, team. Um, their article is titled "Detecting Propaganda on Sentence Level." Uh, it's a six-member team from uh, Sofia, uh, Bulgaria. And by the way, I had to look up um, how does a wombat look. And it's, uh, it's, it's a nice, relatively big marsupial um, animal from Australia. It's, it's, uh, it's really cute. So um, their article is, um, is, is lengthy, and I'm saying this in, in a good way. Uh, it's informative, uh, very well written, and consists of eight sections, and it follows the suggested uh, methodology. Um, it starts, as usual, by presenting an exploratory data analysis, um, and uh, they, they found something interesting here. So, so, so they found that 
uh, propaganda sentences have on average a larger number of words, uh, namely 12 versus 9 for non um, propaganda um, sentences. Um, what, what would have been interesting is to um, um, uh, calculate the prevalence of propaganda sentences conditioned on the fact that the sentence is longer. I really would have loved to see the statistic. Um, they, um, they also notice that uh, propaganda sentences mention groups or individuals that tend to be uh, opinionated, such as, uh, well, Trump, uh, God, Church, Catholics, uh, and Pope uh, Francis. Um, uh, after the exploratory data analysis, um, they start out by the standard data preparation uh, techniques, removal of empty sentences, stop words, etc. Uh, the most um, interesting part uh, of, 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 of the article, or perhaps uh, the part where um, a considerable effort was, was spent, um, was in feature engineering. Um, uh, the uh, Wombats have um, uh, engineered low-level features, such as the parts of speech, and uh, high-level features, uh, I, I would say, um, semantic features, such as uh, subjectivity, readability, um, etc. Uh, some of the features that uh, they engineered um, um, are the sentence length, um, uh, the prevalence of uh, adjectives or um, adverbs. Um, the, the reasoning behind that is the propaganda text uh, probably have a higher prevalence of, of, such, of such words such as uh, problematic, uh, incredible, um, etc. Um, um, uh, a, uh, a prevalence of proper nouns um, could um, indicate appeal to authority, exclamation marks, question marks could indicate um, some, some, some kind of loaded language. Um, I'm can not you speak go... his some final thoughts? Because yeah. those animals yeah. can wait to escape exactly. from the jungle and to present their yeah. solutions. So yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we are in Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to go through um, all, of, all of the things that uh, they did, but maybe just... Um, um, just um, uh, like a summary. So, um, so, so they they ended up um, um, using the the BERT model um, and an ensemble method, including the BERT model, which uh, which is um, also the model used by uh, by um, uh, the, the team that had the best score, and. Um, the article was very well received by by, by the jury. Indeed, uh, it's all, one of the articles that I liked best um, as well. Um, they um, they asked a lot of questions uh, in, in particular. Why why would um, uh, they use um, an ensemble method? And um, I like the response that they gave. It, it was because um, um, by using the ensemble method, the handcrafted features. Um, would be complemented with um, with with the uh, features that the neural network uh, extracts. They they also um, created the vocabulary uh, of phrases um, for the loaded language, uh, and um, and uh, let's so, see how they did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so let me wrap this up. So um, the. Um, the, the only thing that I would have liked to see, in addition to what they did, is to um, to, to try a support vector machine as as a top net. But as as Vinitsa says, let's let's see what uh, what they uh, what they will present themselves. And here comes the fair wombat. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony. I'm Joro. I'm Nico. I'm Marina. And I'm Danny. And we're the Wombats of STEM. For our approach, we decided to split our efforts in uh, two separate directions, uh, or several separate directions. One was to uh, look at the list of uh, different propaganda types and determine some uh, specific uh, features of the data that correspond to each uh, propaganda type and to handcraft some features for each of them. Uh, the other direction was uh, to uh, find some pre-trained uh, language uh, models uh, or word embeddings uh, that can help us 
encode the semantic uh, context of the uh, data. Uh, we had uh, two options there. One was the word language model and the other were uh, the word to vec uh, word embeddings. Uh, the reason we look at both of them is because we weren't sure we would have the computational power and uh, the enough time to actually uh, refine uh, the work model on our data for the current test. So uh, we also tried the work to make uh, embedding. While analyzing the data sets, we noticed that propaganda texts tend to be loaded with more emotions than non-propaganda texts. And that's why we use the IPM Bluemix API to extract emotion features. And as you see on the example, uh, this text is loaded with sadness and anger. And usually propaganda text, texts convey fear and anger. Subjectivity and polarity are also common properties of propaganda texts. And subjective texts um, are influenced by emotions or opinions. Propaganda texts also contain extreme polarity. They can be either extremely positive or extremely negative. Finally, we look into the lexical features of the sentences, uh, like punctuation, uh, because uh, exclamation uh, marks or questions within the sentences show uh, questioning of ideas, uh, which is common for propaganda. Uh, we also look at the part of speech text, uh, especially focusing on uh, the usage of uh, personal nouns uh, and adjectives and adverbs which are correlated to the uh, sentiment uh, and subjectivity of the sentences. Uh, we look into the sentiment, uh, whether it is uh, more positive content or more negative content. And uh, the last metric is the Readability, we use uh, several uh, well-known readability metrics uh, like uh, flash reading ease uh, to measure how complicated the sentences are. BERT is a language model recently published by Google Research Team and we, we used it to further enhance the, the semantic encoding of the sentence. It is like word embeddings but uh, it captures more context we we used it. Um, we we used the pre-trained model given by Google and fine-tuned it for a task by the given dataset. Um, and at the end, we plugged in a classification layer for predicting whether the sentence is propagandistic or not. And as our final solution, we used the stacking and Sebo. And each model of this technique SAML consists of the future engineer features that uh, were mentioned above and the modern model. And uh, with the idea being to encode different, different representations of the data that are uncorrelated. So the meta classifier, in our case a logistic regression, a simple one, can model this model basically to understand which model. Uh, gives better results and uh, to find hidden relation between these models. Yeah, so now, uh, now we will conti continue with the with the recordings. Uh, Giovanni, who is in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, he's on the conference there, so not on vacation, and uh, he was uh, he was supporting us even while while, while he was uh, on on his on, on his flight. The team flip flops. They are again from Bulgaria. So is there someone here? Let's applause them again. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, we will run yeah, his video. Team Flip Flop is composed of seven members and they attempted all the three tasks. Uh, first thing to notice, the article is very detailed. Uh, they, but I like uh, the way it is structured. They give a brief summary uh, at the beginning of the description of each task. 
so they, they give the high level idea so one can can choose whether to go on reading for the details or skip it for task one they use a bidirectional LSTM and for task two they use the same network plus uh, combined with four other different techniques it's pretty interesting the approach they use for uh, task three so they divide the problem into two subtasks the first one uh, in the first one they uh, identify the propagandistic fragments and in the second one they classify the, fr uh, the fragments with one of the A-team propagandistic technique. The amount of work they did is impressive uh, but unfortunately it didn't really translate into top results in the, in the leaderboard. After reading the article, I like have two, just two comments. Like, uh, first one is that my feeling is that maybe they diluted their energy trying too many techniques. Uh, the second thing is that, I'm, but I'm sure that if they had more time, they would have got much, much better results. Like, for example, in uh, in task one. Uh, so their their algorithm is uh, is pretty good because they, it doesn't overfeed. It has consistent result from development and test, but uh, probably their presentation of uh, of the data is is not the best one. So there they could have tried uh, other sentence representation and maybe the, those could have helped. Um, as a last note, I noticed that they, uh, they suggested how to proceed the, their work in the future, which is something I really like because it showed enthusiasm. So good job, guys. Hi, guys. My name is Vichko. It was a pleasure for me to participate in this data talk. My name is Nadia, and it was super fun to participate in this year's Datathon. Hi, my name is Panos Panagos, and it was an honor to participate in this competition. Hi, my name is Dimitar. Hi guys, my name is Nikwai Rangio, and I'm a member of the Flipflops team. I worked on task 2, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more details about what we did there later. Okay, so I'm going to explain you the idea we had for task 1. This approach includes the usage of a recurrent neural network with LSTM layer. As you can imagine, we can't just feed the raw text of the articles into the neural network, so we had to make a data prep first. The data prep is very simple. First, we are lemmatizing all the words in the article to standardize the text. Then, we are do doing a tokenization, which splits the whole text to individual words. Since each article is with different number of tokens, we had to standardize their length because the neural network requires the inputs to be with equal lengths. And now we are ready for the model. As I said earlier, we are using recurrent neural network with bidirectional LSTM layer. This type of neural networks are very suitable for text analysis, even that they have uh, their limitations over long texts. The first layer of the neural network is an embedding layer. It is used to present the individual tokens to n-dimensional vectors, which is giving a sense, of, a sense to the neural network about the text. We experimented with different sizes of the vectors, or we tried using pre-trained word embeddings. And we finally chose to use a 200-dimensional vector, which is learned by our neural network. We have experimented also with the ar architecture of the network, using few LSTM layers with different neurons, but finally, the best results were achieved by only one layer with 32 neurons. We achieved a 0.86 F1 score on the dev set, which is a very decent result for the time we spent on this task. Hello again. Uh, I'm just going to tell you about uh, how we approached task 2 as a team. Uh, most of the team worked on task 2. And uh, from the very beginning, it was very clear that each one of us had a very different idea about how to deal with the problem. Uh, one way to go would be to just have a discussion and uh, choose the best approach, reach a consensus, and then go with this one. But uh, instead, we, we, we did something different. 
uh, we decided that uh, everyone should develop their own idea, uh, produce their own classifier, and in the end we should just combine all of the results in a single uh, big model and hope that this one works uh, better than the individuals. Uh, so we ended up with uh, four uh, different components which we uh, stacked uh, with a logistic regression in the end. Uh, the first component uh, was a random forest uh, built upon uh, sentence embeddings. We embedded the sentences using um, averaging method. Uh, we tokenized them basically and uh, mapped the words to a uh, pre-trained corpus of uh, graph vectors. Uh, the second model was an extreme gradient boosting model, again built upon uh, sentence embeddings. But uh, this time for these embeddings, we used uh, pre-trained uh, word to vec vectors. Uh, the third component uh, is a neural net LSTM model uh, with an embedding layer, but this time we didn't really use any pre-trained vectors to initialize the layer. Uh, it was randomly initialized. And finally, uh, since uh, we had a model for task 3, uh, decided to use this model uh, to score all of our sentences and uh, then map the output to a propaganda, non-propaganda flag. And this would give us a, a classifier that, uh, that is a solution to task 2. Uh, so yeah, we, we had all those uh, four components, stack them together, and the final model is what we submitted. I'm going to explain what we did on task 3. We approached this uh, problem on a sentence level. For each sentence, we uh, tokenized the word and feed them uh, to a, a sequential model, having as an output uh, the propaganda uh, category per word, if any. Thereafter, uh, we transform the output uh, back uh, to, uh, to an article 11, uh, calculating uh, the relative positions. From modeling perspective, uh, we approach uh, the problem on two stages. First, we uh, classify if a word is part of a propaganda. And thereafter, uh, for each propaganda phrase, uh, we predict its kind. As model techniques, uh, we used a pre-trained word embedding vectors of size uh, 200 and tested a, a variety of architectures uh, like LSTM and CNN. Hello from Hawaii. Um, Tim Stark is composed of two humans and one dog. They focus on task one. I have to say their article is very easy to read, but he has uh, enough details and but also they share the, the code as a Jupyter notebook, the, so it's very, yeah. very easy to reproduce uh, their experiments, which is something that I liked. So their idea instead of trying very complex uh, approaches from the very beginning, they start with a relatively simple approaches, uh, but they proceed uh, systematically to, to test them. For example, for the, as a representation, they, they had TF, IDF, uh, word engrams, and they tried various combination of options like uh, using stop wording or not, uh, removing some of the, the engrams according to their frequency. And they also tested uh, a bunch of learning algorithms like SVM, naive Bayes, and logistic regression. 
and also optimized uh, their parameters. So unfortunately, they got so good results that uh, they did not get to the point to uh, explore more complex uh, techniques. One thing that uh, they could have put in their article would uh, that would be really nice to have read about it, it would be the lesson learned from their experiments. For example, things like um, uh, why using stop wording was beneficial and so on. But all in all, I would say this is uh, uh, this is a very nice submission. Hello everybody, greetings from Team Stark. Uh, it's actually a team of two, me, Vasil Dimitrov, and my cute Yorkshire Terrier, Stark. I hope you like dogs. I have to tell you that he helped me a lot and is still catching up with his sleep. Well, first, let me thank you, uh, Data Science, for the very interesting datatone with the cause that is so relevant at this moment, detecting propaganda and fake news which we see to be all around us, especially recently. The tasks are classic and relatively simple. Text classification for task 1 and multiple categories classification and tagging for task 2 and 3. Uh, I didn't have enough time during the weekend, so I focused solely on the first task. Now, let me tell you that I'm studying and practicing machine learning for the last year and a half, mainly as a hobby, but also for some projects at work. So I have a bit of a background. From my experience so far, I have seen that more complicated models based on deep learning and word embeddings do not show expected results on text classification tasks, especially when one is looking for the fast model generation with decent performance. That is why my approach was to stick to the classics of NLP, word count and TF-IDF vectorizers, Pegaforks I thought it would be too simple, and for classificator again try several simple algorithms, excluding deep learning. Find more pro most promising of these algorithms and optimize the parameters in order to get the highest score. I started with word count and linear regression, which gave me 78% on the development set. Support vector machines got 76% and XGBoost achieved 79%. Adding stop words, playing with engrams, and some other parameters uh, improved my score actually to 83.7%, which was fourth result on the development dataset. Obviously, this parameter search should have been uh, done using some hyperparameter optimization technique like grid search, which I tried to do, but I had some software problems with, with the libraries, so I had to do all of this manually. Well, some approaches that uh, I tried were not so lucky. I tried naive base as well, with different alpha values, uh, but uh, results were always like 5 to 10% lower than support vector machines. Moving then to test set, the F1 uh, value of my best model improved to 88.6%, which was then second place at the leaderboard. And then moving to the test set produced amazing top result of 86.3. Obviously, this model uh, was uh, dealing with generalization very well. As a whole, I expected to be somewhere within the first top 20% of the participants, definitely not being the top performer. Still, I <laughs> strongly believe in Pareto principle, and usually I'm trying to get the most value at minimum expense. Of course, having more time to build and train a sophisticated deep learning model using latest embeddings uh, will improve this score, but it will take much, much long time. So I definitely will prepare much better for the next datathon and hope uh, to be able to get better code and more precise approach to the presented problem. But for this first time experience, it was really fun for me and hope to see you guys next time. Okay, so now I switch on the microphone. <laughs> okay, so now, okay, we have two 
last uh, teams. This is Team Data Monks. They are from India. Uh, they are a team of five, five people. So Laura will will present and she will come here. Um, if I need to hold it. No, I'll hold it. If you have. Okay, uh, so let me pr briefly present the data monks. So it, it comes really nicely after the presentation of Team Stark because they are, they are actually, um, they also presented this uh, classical uh, methods for NLP. Um, so they also didn't do uh, neural networks, which is like fair because I see, uh, after reading the 10 articles, I see that there were, people were torn like, do I try a very complex architecture from the beginning that might not run, that might not finish, but, but it's super powerful and I may get to the bottom of this propaganda. And then there was this like school uh, textbook uh, approach. I'm going to do TFIDF. I'm going to do just a bag of words. Um, it's going to finish. I'm, I can look at my features. I can improve on that just by understanding the, 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 the features, do some feature engineering, and then it's fine. So this is what the data monks did. They actually really used a lot of uh, classical models like uh, random forest, like uh, logistic regression perceptrons, and so on and so forth. And then they said, I'm going to also try um, the TF-IDF um, encoding and the simple count encoding. Um, and uh, yeah, they presented the, um, the results. Um, and on they were able, because th they had such, gen such generic and uh, not so tuned to the task um, models, they were able to actually submit to task one and task two models, they were okay. Uh, for task three, I actually didn't understand how they modeled with like simple like models the um, the sequence tagging. But I think that they can yeah uh, they can explain that in their they will explain that in their video. Um, and their article is really really detailed. You could look through code. You can look through all the steps. So so yeah, um, a very uh, nice approach all in all about and they, they also did class weighing which yeah is also a good thing to do because it improves yeah so congrats to them <laughs> hello guys uh, we are data monks hello guys. so this is my team member Barun this is Prashad this is myself Aditya this is Srikar and this is Steny The train data that was provided to us in the text was in the text format. Uh, so for the task one, uh, what we did was uh, we used Excel and we imported uh, the data using import from text and then imported it uh, into uh, a CSV. And there was the tab del tab delimiter option uh, that we have chosen in order to uh, sort out the columns and that's what we have uh, done for task one cleaning so for task two uh, there were some 900 files that were given in the train data and there were three patterns of files one was uh, task three labels one was task two labels and one was uh, text format files so uh, I wrote a Python code to sort sort out these uh, files into task 2 labels, task 3 labels and articles. After that, I used batch import in Excel and combined all the article files into these four columns. Similarly, I ran a Python script in order to read each line from articles and export it into CSV. Then I copied the column and added it into the task to CSV file. And that's how I have done the, we have done the data cleaning for task two. Similarly, we have also done the data cleaning for task three. Uh, uh, but the only extra thing there was uh, we, converted it into a character array and took the substring of it. Hello guys, uh, this side Prasad from Data Monk's team. As Sahih has explained data preparation and data cleaning, 
I'll be uh, going ahead with data pre-processing, model building, hyperparameter tuning, and model selection uh, for our team monk. As you know, uh, data ca cannot be uh, text data cannot be directly fed into our model. We need a, a data pre-processing uh, technique uh, to feed the data into a classifier. Here we use vectorization as our technique to pre-process our data. In vectorization, we, uh, we tokenize a collection of text document. Here we are using two types of vectorizers. One is count vectorization and TF-IDF vectorizer. We will be building models on both of these vectorization and analyzing their performance and select the best vectorizer, vectorizer techn technique. Uh, count vectorization is simply a tokenization collection of text documents and build a vocabulary on its known words. In TFID vectorization, it will learn the vocabulary and inverse document frequency weighing and it will allow us to encode new document, uh, documents according, accordingly. After pre uh, we also uh, remove stop words uh, from our data so that we can get more meaningful results through our data pre-processing uh, model building through our model building the classifier algorithms we used are new based passive aggressive classifier decision tree random forest knn logistic support vector svm and xjboost model these are basically uh, classical supervised document classification and uh, using uh, in task one and task two uh, we can use these algorithms to get maximum efficiency uh, after we applied uh, our uh, pre-processed data into these models uh, we can see that in count processor decision tree random forest classifier and svn are giving high specificity as it is predicting most of the predictions as propagandistic Hence, negative class are being rightly pro uh, predicted, but positive class is not being predicted correctly. Balancing sensitivity and specificity, we observe that MLP classifier performs the best for our task. Here, the accuracy and F1 score are both in high terms. The F1 score we accuracy we got is 96.07 and F1 score being 83.98 83.98 Similarly for TF-IDF method uh, we uh, applied our pre-processed data in TF-IDF vectorized, uh, vectorized data uh, to, a uh, to different models and we can find that specificity is uh, acro across the algorithms are above 90% but sensitivity ranges from 17% to 74% uh, 80% here also we can see that multinomial NB performs the best among the classifier in task 2 uh, task 2 is uh, same uh, here uh, here we have to detect propaganda at sentence level here also we use classify uh, classi uh, classical supervised learning uh, methods and we saw that sensitivity and specificity of different model uh, specificity is pretty high for sgboost svn decision tree high accuracy can be seen here due to imbalance class but considering sensitivity as well, we can see that passive, aggressive, and multinomial NB classifier works better for predicting positive class. Here, the count vectorization uh, using count vectorization top three F1 score is being given by passive, aggressive classifier, multinomial NB classifier, and MLB classifier. We we used passive, aggressive classifier in test data to predict our F1 uh, predict uh, predict on test data. F1 score for passive ag uh, aggressive model which we got 
as you can see is 59.6 we have used tf idf vectorizer uh, for uh, working on the third task on these nine classifiers out of these random forest and mlp classifier have given us a zero point uh, random forest has given us 0.47 f1 score with 0.49 uh, and 0.51 as specificity and sensitivity uh, which is uh, uh, which is good and in uh, mlp classifier uh, it's 0.48 with equal specificity and sensitivity so uh, which is uh, good for uh, classification if the if they have equal specificity and sensitivity so i would be going for uh, mlp classifier approach thank you Okay, so we finally are reaching our last team, uh, last team from Qatar, team team the data exploiters. Uh, yeah, let's be fast because it takes more time than we expected. So, okay, so is like this okay? If we talk like okay, so team data exploiters from Qatar uh, tackled only the task three, a uh, task two. They submitted only for task two. Um, I liked very much their argument for submitting only for task for focusing on task two. They said that actually, if they solve task two, they have a nice way to a fast way to uh, get some solution for task one and for for task three. And they explained there in their article. Um, they started with BERT, and actually, they couldn't uh, they could they didn't succeed to run it. They run into complexity problems. I mean, maybe they couldn't tune it well. I don't know what was the problem there. So this is why they only used the um, embeddings from BERT and. And they uh, trained uh, models like um, random forest, like uh, um, perceptrons, and they got qu they got quite a good score. And I think that actually I think that they were second. And my f personal feeling is that if they had uh, done some class weighing because the class classes were unbalanced, I think that they could have gotten two more percentages actually to come first on the second tasks. But that's my personal feeling. I don't know. They can try. And that's it, yeah. Hi everyone, we are Team Data Exploiters from Hamad bin Khalifa University, Qatar. My name is Fahra and my colleagues are Ahmad and Shahal. And we are here to represent our participation in Hack the News Datathon 2019. To start with, as introduction, uh, I'm going to start with the definition of propaganda. propaganda is information of biased or misleading nature that is used to promote a political cause or a point of view. Now, it is difficult for computers or machines to make the judgment whether a text or an article can contain uh, propaganda or not. Uh, therefore, the research community has been looking for ways to make this task achievable using machine learning and deep learning. Uh, to achieve this task, we have used a tool called BERT BERT is a project created by Google and it was chosen by our team and uh, was used to significantly to achieve our task. Now, BERT is a pre-trained pre language representations that obtains state-of-art results uh, on, a wire, in, on a wide array of uh, natural language processing tasks. And what's so special about BERT that uh, it takes the whole context of the text uh, to make the judgment. Uh, the first phase we went through is preparing the data. So we took a look at the data set and we uh, decided to convert it into suitable data or suitable input to feed our models and classifiers. So if we take a look at our journey, we can see that uh, in day one, uh, we decided to work on uh, the base of BERT. Uh, so we decided to work on task two uh, in the beginning because we found out that it's e easy to carry the results to task uh, one and three after that. So our goal in the beginning was to fine-tune BERT architecture including the embeddings. However, due to the 
limited hardware resources that we have. Uh, we used the pre-trained model of BERT using 100 million parameters uh, for all our experiments. Uh, jumping to uh, day two, we have uh, used the embeddings base that, that was trained with 110 million parameters and we achieved our uh, first F1 score which was uh, 0 0.55. Uh, after achieving the score we have decided to move to a more powerful classifier so uh, we used neural network classifier with BERT embeddings and we were able to achieve a score of 0.57 and this represented our first submission and this had this has put us on on the second position on the leaderboards uh, we decided to use other models such as Elmo uh, with finding tuning and embeddings uh, that come that come with it and we were able to achieve a similar score of 0.56 on the third and last day, uh, we have tried creating ensembles of neural networks and sometimes other models like Naive Bayes and KNN. Uh, and in the end of the third day, we have uh, used several tools such as Adaboost, SVM, and Random Forest. And we have combined uh, multiple techniques such as pseudo-labeling, averaging results of previous uh, submissions, and we settled on our best submission uh, F1 score, which is 0.59. Uh, so uh, going forward, we would like to successfully fine tune BERT uh, for task two to achieve better results. Uh, we can also use the same model for uh, task one if uh, by using multiple uh, sentences to, uh, to judge the article, whether it's propaganda or not. And we made a good progress in building our model uh, for task three, which uh, we thought uh, of framing it like it's a uh, named entity recognition uh, for propaganda recognition. And uh, we can use fine tune words uh, with embeddings from task two to achieve this task. And uh, to achieve that, uh, we would uh, split the sentences using the spans. For example, if the sentence is, uh, is labeled as propaganda, and the span uh, from 9 to 15 is the propaganda part, which is monster. We would take the sentence and take every word and represent it by a number. So he would be 0, is 0, a 0, and monster would be 3 to label the propaganda as uh, depending on, on its type. So type 3 would be uh, name calling or labeling in this case. Uh, we would like to thank a number of open source uh, resources that we have used, such as uh, PyTorch uh, pre-trained BERT and uh, BERT as service. And uh, it's worth noting that our primary workhorse was a machine that is uh, 1080 Ti. And to end, uh, to end with, Datathon was a great experience uh, for us. We had tons of fun working with experts and making friends with similar expertise. Uh, the family of Datathon uh, has done a great job connecting all the participants from different countries and gave them tools not only to make uh, achieving the tasks possible, but also to make uh, the Datathon a wonderful experience. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so yeah, it was a long session. Uh, probably we... Yeah, 10 finalists, uh, we want to give a floor for each one of them. Also, we want to thank to the initiators who spend time or our mentors. So let's applause them. I mean, they give a really valuable feedback. <laughs> but Laura is here, so yeah, we are so, we, we, we are so happy that they spent uh, this time, this effort uh, to prepare and to review and also uh, to be positive. Something that we are reaching the announcement of the of the winners, and uh, now now 
now we want to share that this what we are doing will not happen if we don't have supporters, if we don't have uh, or, or organization and companies who are believing in what we are doing, who are supporting us in all other initiatives apart from the data tones, from the summer school which we are doing also regular meetups, workshops, and uh, even with the monthly challenge which which we are starting. So world quant is a uh, is a, yeah. Let's applaud them. Okay, this is in my area, so I'm going to say some words about WorldQuant. <coughs> they are a um, really successful hedge fund that are basing their, basing their strategies on data mining uh, techniques and machine learning uh, and are really he uh, helping us out. And we are working with them to have uh, two or three workshops coming up uh, in the next months to present their platform and to present their opportunities to everyone in the world to okay learn and earn <laughs> okay and so then we have telelink so let's applaud them also uh, the good part is it's a bulgarian company so they want to build uh, data science expertise in uh, in this domain so they are supporting us in what we are doing and also uh, they're really open open minded for such kind of uh, stuffs uh, the other one is a data pro so yeah, let's applaud them also. Uh, they are working in such initiatives. We also, with COSU, uh, I know that uh, there was a propaganda for Russian propaganda here, uh, research like four years ago. It was done again by A-Data Pro. Now A-Data Pro also recognized that this initiative and they decided to support us. So they spent a lot of effort in terms of manpower and annotations. And, <laughs> okay, so this is this is the word, the word uh, I which have marketing ideas here. Before we <laughs> have the winner, I have marketing tasks. <laughs> okay, the awards. The, we have to announce what are the awards. Uh, first of all, this time uh, we switched a little bit the style of the data town. It's not so much of for uh, uh, learning. It. In, it uh, invariably is a learning um, um, way. Uh, it's a learning uh, uh, event, but we wanted to have the, the real experts, and you can see that from the from the solutions we have had great solutions. So this, we decided to go in the way of promoting awards, and this time we were able to put together a sizable amount of uh, award uh, fund. In, in various types of awards. Uh, let me see. So first of all, let's thank to all the donors, uh, uh, the crowdfunding campaign that we did. Uh, thank for all these guys. First of all, Gamesick and on to text. Hmm? And all the rest, of course, the names are here. These are private people who just donated uh, a couple of bucks here, 100 bucks there, and so on. So thank for, thanks for them. These are the, the your guys rock, and uh, without you, the world will never move. Uh, next thing, we have several other awards. OK, the awards. OK, let me. OK, I'll, I'll give this to Pepe. He's the boss of these awards. The awards from Clouds. Cloudsploit, it's uh, AWS uh, security and monitoring automation tool. Uh, everybody who participated in the Datathon with, uh, with an article uh, is receiving the basic package of their tool. And the winners receive a bigger package. Uh, onto text are giving us awards um, their uh, ed educational uh, package, which is aimed to, <laughs> which is aimed to people who want to learn more about uh, semantic technologies and how to build their proof of concept uh, models. And Startup Grind is a conference in uh, San Francisco. Uh, we have two tickets for the conference and uh, because it's uh, coming in the next two weeks, actually it's open to any one of the finalists who want to participate. They should contact and uh, get more information. 
Right. Then, oops, sorry, I have a, I have a remark. Yeah, go ahead. yeah, something to mention that uh, this this the the award amount uh, the award amount uh, it's like a split between cash and something which is a product re related online online ser services and yes and this and this with the conference it's again uh, a good gesture of startup green Riyadh. So the next one. Uh, yeah, we all already said in this for the startup green. And what else? Okay, okay the fourth and five places get some tickets for online training for uh, provided by uh, by Onto Text and some services by Cloud Spot. I think in in a rough amount of uh, several hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, something like this. Uh, so half of the half of the finalists are going to get some award anyway. The third place gets uh, a roughly amount of uh, $1,024, <laughs> uh, which is some cash, some uh, some uh, service by uh, CloudSpoint and some uh, training package by uh, OntoText. The same package goes for, uh, for the uh, second place team, but it's uh, a little bit uh, more of each of these. And the same goes for first place, uh, but the reward there is altogether, you know, more than $4,000. And with this, we have mentioned everybody who has helped us, right? Right? With this, we are ready to announce in back order the, the, the you know, the ranking of, uh, done by the jury. The ranking is done by the uh, method of rank correlation. So basically, there are 12 jury members. Each of them have ranked the teams. And we are aggregating the result. And sooner or later, in the next couple of days or next uh, week, for example, we're going to post even the uh, analysis of statistical significance of the ranking and so on, because we are nerds, not, not because anything else. Anyhow, we'll start with team number 10, and team number 10 is Drumbeats uh, Data Explorers. <laughs> Yoo okay. Team number 9, Antiganda. Team number eight, Data Monks. <laughs> Team number seven, Data Titans. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the first loser is <laughs> Team number six is Flip Flops. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to uh, get to say this. All right, so we move on. Uh, we move on to the top five teams. Okay, first of all, we're going to pronounce f f num team number five and four because they get, uh, you know, typical awards, uh, similar awards. So team number five will be Leopards. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> So they get the uh, reward. Team number four is Stark. Yay! <laughs> Good job. Uh, and for the next awards, I'm going to give this, uh, the, the, the mic to Sergi. He is going to pronounce the number three winner. And because we need to have some sort of, you know, some sort of suspense. We are going to announce after the number three together, number one and number two. So really, the first loser is coming up. <laughs> because you know that there is no second place. You know, second best is the first loser. OK, so now we are the, winners. the winners. And the third place goes to, goes to Lama. Yeah. Lama. 
Lama is the team from Istanbul. So good job, guys. Yeah, well done. And now, bef yeah. <laughs> but uh, but before that, uh, I I I want to thank to the whole team. So if you can come here, Chris, Danny, Petia, just I mean uh, Laura, if you yeah, part of us. Stefcho, come in, come Vladi. here. Is, Vladi is here. Ah, Vladi. Okay. Is there someone someone to grab his uh, his camera? Okay, Mila. Okay, so this is us. Yeah, this and, and some, some more. Not all yeah, all. some are in Hawaii, but they're <laughs> working. <laughs> okay, so yeah, thank you. And yeah, it was. Yeah, wait. Now back back to workstations. <laughs> okay, I mean uh, we are we are, we are a big team, so it was tough decision and tough work. Uh, okay, so now you know who were the second and the first place. One of them is from Bulgaria. The other, yeah, the, you don't know them. <laughs> Be shy. And the other one is from Germany. So uh, we receive very positive and good feedback for both of them. Uh, the results were really close. I mean, uh, if we were, we were not using this ranking, probably they will be equal. And now I'm so happy. So let's see who is the winner. And the winner is Propaganda and Notification right, Group. Job. Yeah, good job, yeah. Let's applause them. Woo! So they will finally afford to buy something big in Germany with this money. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, we all know Astea, so applause them for them. Uh, what, what else we can say about them? So uh, what follows for all the winners? We will, no, no, we will not give something now. Uh, uh, because it's online and uh, you all re, uh, will, will be contacted. I mean, we want uh, one, part, one uh, members from the, from the team to contact us and find the... The way they will receive their awards. Yeah, uh, for all the rest, you will receive who participated and submitted an article. You will receive a certificate plus code, which they can use for Amazon uh, security services. And uh, also... Yeah, and, and this is it. I mean, up to, up, up to the fifth team, we will, need, we will contact them or they will contact us at the end, but they, what they need to do to nominate one person. And... Next slide. Ah, what's next? Yeah, what's next? Should I... Okay. Oh. Right, um, what's next? Actually, what's next? Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, thank you, guys. What's next? Actually, we have two, two different types of information. First of all, uh, we have already grown a big network of uh, uh, partners, supporters, friends. And if you would like to be part of this network, no matter if you would, would like to be a case provider for one of our next datatons, or if you would like to be a host for our next datatons, or, or you would like to become a community uh, member even if you're as a physical entity or as an organization, Please do contact us. We are in this. Uh, we are growing every year, and uh, every next datathon, we are we are exploding here, really. So this is something that I would like you to take all, all of you who are online and all of you who are physically here. And the other thing that's what's next is really the interesting stuff. What is really next? What are the things 